fighting, fucking, and projectile vomiting. Finally, a rom-com for everyone. We saw a beautiful disaster, so you know what that means. Tonight, in the pizza capital of the world, to talk about the 2023 film. Yes, this movie came out literally months ago. A beautiful disaster. It's like Fight Club meets Fifty Shades of Grey meets American Pie, but produced by the Hallmark Channel. If you've not seen this movie, what do you need to know? Well, there's a real good girl who's also really good at poker, but she's leaving that behind to go to college where she meets a dude who's in a fight club, a real bad boy who ain't that bad. <laughs> they have an interesting relationship. I don't get why they're not together, but that's the whole movie. There's another dude. He's much older. We'll get into that. And then the movie takes a wild twist when Brian Austin Green shows up as this girl's father and proceeds to turn this into a weird heist movie. More fights are had, deals are made, and in the end, everything turns out A-OK. -okay. And here's the thing. I hope you stayed for the post-credit sequence. So we'll talk about all of that and more. But first, let me introduce my co-host. Please welcome to the stage, Mr. Jason Manzoukas! What's up, jerks? What's happening, New Haven, Connecticut? I came to your city, I took a lactate, and I ate pizza! Or I should say, I ate a pizza. Get that A out of my pizza! Jason, Paul, you and I were backstage. We don't normally talk about the movie before we get on stage, but we were giddy because this movie was a treat. Well, my question for you is, why are we even covering this movie for this podcast? This should be an episode of Unspooled. Thank you. And this... no, I will not guest on that episode. <laughs> um, I fucking loved this movie. Full stop. It is... It's an odd, it's an odd movie because... It's not. I disagree. It might present as odd, but it makes all the sense in the world. Well, there you go. I mean, there you go. And you know what I love about it? It's finally a rom-com for the dudes. Uh, Fucking fight! Vegas! Yeah! Girls love a bad boy who fights MMA but has a consent app. <laughs> it's 2023 bad boys use consent apps. He's such a bad boy that he also knows a lot about biology. All right, 
we're going to break this all down, but there's someone out there that loves a romance, that loves a YA, and she is going to break down all the plot with us. Please welcome my other co-host, Miss June Diane Raphael. Welcome, June. Oh, hi, Paul. How are you? I am okay. <laughs> Period. Now, I'm just you, okay. Now, June, your thoughts on this film? Yeah. So, <sighs> I've never seen a movie this long. This was the longest film I have ever laid my eyes upon. Can I, when I, I, I would have a, liked more. Jason, at a certain point, Paul and I were watching it in our hotel and we stopped it and I said, it's gotta be almost over. This has to be over. What else could happen? They're together now. It has to be over. 42 minutes left. Oh yeah. 42 minutes left. And I said, Paul, I gotta get out of the room. And he said, where should we go? And I said, let's get a Diet Coke. It was an emergency. We had to leave. We had to walk away. This was this movie a struggle. does require a snack break, an intermission, if you will, like a. a we took an intermission. Oh, this movie rewards an intermission. Oh yes. When they finally fuck, and goddamn, do they fuck? <laughs> when they finally fuck, and it's all over, and boom, and I'm like, oh, okay, nice. I'm watching. I'm watching it backstage at this venue. I'm like, oh, okay. I guess, uh, I guess I'm all done. Boom. 35 minutes left? And you will be surprised to know the movie is only an hour and 34 minutes. That and what can't happens be is true, the... Paul. That can't be true. Well, it is true. It is true. But I understand because all of Act 3 is in its entirety a different movie with its own beginning, middle, and end. Yes. As if it's a short true. Judd Apatow movie. There is something bizarre because the premise of this movie is in the middle, which is the bet. The bet, like that would be a whole movie. Live with me for 30 days. And then they fall in love. But that's like introduced a half an hour in, and then there's like an hour after that. Oh, yeah. Like that's just, a, that's an interlude. The well, bet is an interlude. There's, Paul, even before that, there's another movie in there, a, a movie I'd much rather see, to be quite honest, about Lucky 13 going to college. I'm like, give me that. How, I'd love to see that movie. How is the movie not starting with her as a child and then jumping us forward? Why don't we ever get it? We get the briefest of hints of a flashback. Well, when, when his dad, when Travis's dad is like, I heard tell of a gambler, a gambler in Las Vegas. They're in Sacramento. No one, no one hears the tell of a, a small time gambler in old Vegas. Like, the, it's, it's, it's not even the new Vegas. And it's all like, five sons are like, whoa, Lucky 13? We, of course, all know who Lucky 13 is. And here's what I never got to the bottom of. I, I wonder if anyone has the answer up here. Is it why are there so many fight clubs in Sacramento? <laughs> well, that part. And, and are they still auditioning for that, <laughs> that production of Titus Andronicus? <laughs> and also, how did her and America know each other? Yeah, she, maybe America's also from Vegas. There's a lot of questions. And the first one that jumped out to me was, we see her writing an email, and we're hearing it in voiceover, and we're reading it on the screen. And I was like, That wow. was a red flag. And we're also, we're also receiving in kind of visuals all the articles about Lucky 13. Yes. They're giving us information, but no context, no understanding, no nothing. No, and my biggest concern was, why is her font that big? She's a young girl. Her eye should Not be Not only very was good. it so big, it was big and it was bold. Dear Dad. It was also <laughs> sorry, bolded. I, sorry I, was I like, ran off. It's sorry I ran off. I need a fresh start. <laughs> also, what I love about this movie is they set up this premise. Lucky 13. They don't... I know eventually they get to it, but as an audience member, this was a question I had. I was like, okay, so she's a poker prodigy. 
How the fuck did she play poker in a casino underground. at 13? Underground. They keep saying underground. But there is newspaper clippings. Oh, oh, I see what you're saying. So I imagine. This yeah. is like, what I had like to. She was written up in be, all the papers. I had to answer questions that the movie would not dare approach. And I, I thought, I just had to assume that there was some sort of like junior poker league that she played in. That there was some sort of kids poker league where they're, you know, they're kids playing poker. with Pokemon. Here's the thing that I, <laughs> like, here's oh. what I want to just draw your attention to, though, which I, I was truly mind scrambled at, which was this movie came out this year. Yes. This is a contemporary movie. So I don't April. accept that so at all. She, so the, the period in which she is Brian Austin Green's, right? That's who it yes. is, right? Yes. Daughter, Lucky 13, is. 2013. <laughs> it's 10 years ago. All of that took place in the era of the internet. In the era, and they're acting as if she's from the 40s. Like, I heard legend about you. I heard, you know. <laughs> yeah, a... there, there is this weird thing. Like, it, this is a time where phones, everything is in full, full speed. I will say this. What I love about this movie is... There are jokes, and they, they are making jokes, and I know that that is, it's a comedy, but sometimes it feels like the actors aren't sure what the jokes are, because one of the first lines in the movie, she's like, oh, and the showers suck, to which the lead character goes, I'm sure the showers don't suck. I was like, okay, this is position, like, yeah. Why? Okay, well, why would you doubt that? But then and why she, are you saying that? Is she thinking like, does but the then shower when suck she you says, up? When they're having sex for the first time and she says, is it in? I was like, home run joke. Great she's joke. Killing it. And when she's drunk and saying, okay, you can turn around and she's still topless all those times. I was like, this is killing me. This is good. The movie, I agree. The movie does itself so many favors by being funny instead of just, if this had been more um, Nicholas Sparksy. Yes. Right? We've done some of those movies. To, it, more earnest or sincere, it would have been, I think, insufferable. I but, have to push back here. Please. I, please, you mean, I, you mean I, I have on to. my contention that this is the funniest movie <laughs> okay. in I film know, history? I know this is the third night of our tour, and I know we're starting to lose our minds, but I, I had one laugh in the movie, and it was at the scene where she was topless, I thought that was really well played and I did genuinely laugh. But this movie, and I, we talked about this word I'm about to use, Jason, yesterday. And we said this word is overused and it's lost its meaning. But I'm going to redefine it with this film and say the movie is cringe. It is so cringe. Everything about it, I was cringing, I was bracing. I need a massage. I was so deeply uncomfortable <laughs> with what I was watching, and I was so upset about the jokes that they were going for. And, I, and, and the sex joke, I actually was angry about that joke, is it in? Because I'm like, all I've done here is wait for you two to fuck, and you're going to make a joke right now? Like, oh, see, I... I I really appreciated that they were also willing to let the romantic leads be silly, be goofy, tell jokes, be more not as... Jason, like the scene where they're I, throwing each other around the hotel room yes. and destroy the hotel room, I thought was very funny. Now, okay. were, there other, were there other actors in those roles? I might have even been more impressed by it. But I liked that because if it had tried to be an earnest sex scene, I think it would have been more cringe for me. Well, wow, here, okay. I, I don't disagree with what you're saying, but I will say this, that it feels to me like a lot of improv was used. And as somebody who likes to improvise, I will say to the detriment of the characters because she is neither naive nor innocent as much. Like, she's like... I'm as sassy as you. And he's like, well, I'll out-sass you. Everyone's fucking sassy. And I'm like, I can't get a read on who I didn't is know cool who or who's not was. cool. I, I, I kept on wanting to say to them, just be yourselves. <laughs> just be yourselves. And but then that's, that's the whole point, is, though, is she's not being herself. She's like, I want to be 
a normal college person who denies myself. But myself would go with Travis. Travis is like my dad. I'm trying to not make chaotic decisions. But she doesn't say that, nor do we see her even transition. We see her on the bus. I'm like, tick, 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 typing. And we're like, oh, you're a normal girl. But I guess maybe she's not. Later in the movie, about an hour and 27 minutes in, she goes, now, the reason why I don't want to be with Travis. I'm like, put that in the beginning. And you know what, Paul? I guess I have to say this. I didn't like who she was pretending to be, and I didn't like who she really was. I didn't like either version of her, and I didn't want to watch her for five hours. And regardless of the comedy, the reality of the movie, which is they go to this very exclusive college in Sacramento. Is it exclusive? What? When, it's all that goes exclusive. When I found out it was Sacramento, I lost my Sac-town mind. Sacktown to the Mactown. I, w- I was like, none of this is present in um, the Greta Gerwig movie. <laughs> <laughs> when, when she, this, is, this is like more of a cool Lady Bird. Um, <laughs> Lady Bird just shows up at a fight club. Lady Bird's well, like, let's go to the circle. Well, this is, this to me is the craziest thing. Like, we're introduced to this, like, it's normal, it's normal. It's like, oh, my boyfriend's taking us out. And then all of a sudden, we're, like, in a dungeon from Blade One. I'm like, oh, shit, is this a vampire movie? <laughs> and then they walk in to a full-on fight club. And, no, and, and it's like, all, oh, we love fight club. This is, again, a movie made in 2023. Like, oh, you got to come to fight club. No, it's, listen, <laughs> and, and, and by the way, call me grandma. That's fine. But I didn't think it was funny I know you love the comedy so much. It's Jason. the funniest movie I've ever but seen. I, this movie's I didn't funnier think than it, Anchorman. I didn't think it was a I didn't think it was a funny meat cute for her to have blood splattered all over her. That was Was insane. that funny? Is that supposed to be funny? That no, that was insane. <laughs> she was she, sprayed she, with another man's blood. And she's, she's into it. She she's is like, into Ooh. it. She's so into it that she we it's cut disgusting. to her. We cut to her masturbating in the shower. Except Thinking it's not it. masturbating. It's just aggressive <laughs> shoulder washing. <laughs> the movie is like she's so turned on. <laughs> just rubbing their own shoulders. That's, like, that that's all they can show is. Just <laughs> that's like in Star Trek. There was like an episode or a movie where like Kirk hits somebody in the kneecaps and like ooh and they go. That's where his balls are. You know, so maybe, maybe, you know, maybe she's got one of those upper, upper deckers. Why? Oh, Jesus. I don't judge. I'm all about body positivity. You got an upper decker. You got one below the waist. Wherever you got it. It's cool. Do you think, do you think, what's the actor's name who plays Travis? Uh, the character's name is Travis, uh, Mad, Mad Dog. Travis Mad Dog. Uh, Dylan Sprouse. Is he a Mad Dog? Mad Dog, when Mad Dog is in all of these fights, right? He knows he's not caught by surprise. Why is he wearing jeans the whole time? If I'm going to be in a fight club and that is, that condones and nay, encourages kicking, I'm not going to be wearing my jeans. Jeans don't have that much give, although I know Chuck Norris made a jean. A kicking jean. Oh, this, well, this guy is not Chuck Norris. I mean, <laughs> imagine if just swap it out. She falls in love with, with grizzled old Chuck Norris, a little, a little fucking beef jerky in jeans just going ham on people. I couldn't, I, you know, and I know I'm saying a lot of positive things about this. Don't get me wrong. The movie is absolute nonsense. But... Looking ahead at the movie we have tomorrow night and knowing what we've watched in the past, boy, was this a breath of fresh air. Yes. You know Indeed. what? You're right. And I, I, you're right. It had a lot of elements that I... Sh- that's, that's where I'm confused because knowing what I know about the movies we're forced to watch, you know, I, I'm not here with my own consent. I never signed a consent app Neither did letter. she. Yeah. Neither did she. She never signs the consent app. By the way, can we look at that consent app? I um, need to see this piece of technology. We have a picture of it right here. So this is the consent app, and it's got some good details. It's called Consent Date. Oh, it this says, is interesting. She sent it to him. 
Yes. Carmen is requesting, requesting sexual sex. consent. Yeah, because that's the whole... The movie likes to play in, like, the post-Me Too era of, like, can bad boys really be bad? And we're... They're, they attempt to explore that, and it enraged me so much. Yeah. I, I literally was, like, losing my mind. But, yeah, she sends it to him because he doesn't want to get into trouble. Of course. Now, is, is of course. he saying that he doesn't want any BDSM? Or is she saying she doesn't want any BDSM? This is her. She this is, is hers. requesting. The hearts are hers. Okay. So, but I'm confused allowed about what allowed... Devices. What, what do you think <laughs> allowed devices is? You think that's vibrators? I guess so. Allowed devices. I thought it meant like... I'd love to see that drop-down menu. <laughs> <laughs> Can we just click on that, please? <laughs> love to see what's in that drop-down menu. I also... Guess what? I'd really like to see what's in more. <laughs> Animals. Or upper deckers. <laughs> um, a section that's just gross. But I also just, again, the writing in this movie always got me because the America's boyfriend brought our main girl to the fight club. And then they meet for lunch the next day. And he goes, So, how was last night? You, you all went together. <laughs> you seemingly all left together too. <laughs> They didn't, didn't. Well, once they left, they stopped talking to each other. <laughs> there was no recap of the night. There was no such a great time. Thanks so much. Bop, th nothing. How was last night? We all experienced how about, it. How about when? Like, they why do we need to reset the table? We, the audience, saw it. They saw it with her. We don't need to. All we need to do is establish that this man is a college student. Which the only way they get away with Dylan Sprouse, Zach from Sweet Life with Zach and Cody. Uh, Wait, no, 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 no. That's Dylan Sprouse from The Sweet Life with no. Zach and Cody and Above Deck with Zach and Cody. That's a Zach and a Cody? That's a Zach and Cody. <gasps> That's Zach. For so, what's so wild about that? Beth, is can like, you pull up a picture so of Zach? For so long, you and I used to like take gummies and watch The Sweet Life of Zach and Cody, and I can't believe that we did. That's him. Wow. Well, I think a lot of people thought that Zach was the ugly brother. And then people, when they saw this movie, said, oh, well, I guess we were is, wrong. Can I ask a admittedly deeply naive question? Yeah. Is he a known hunk? Yeah. I don't know. Thank you, women of New Haven. <laughs> it's exactly what I was looking for. Yeah, so I couldn't tell, because that was one of my questions. And, and same with the... the uh, Ashley? Is her name Ashley in the movie? Yes. Is she... Abby. Is she, Abby? Is, I didn't is know, she a known hunk? Is she a known honey? Okay, All right, it. well, I guess what I will say, and this is something that is a well that I just want to take the lid off of. We can go down it later, but there is a series of films that use the word after, right? After we collided, uh, after, after we fell, after ever happy, These are like after romance, everything. all romance movies? Yes, very serious YA, kind of what you're talking about. Um, and Dylan Sprouse is in one of these movies, so much so that they actually show clips of those after movies in here. So when that roommate is watching TV and crying, he's watching Dylan Sprouse in an after movie. So it's like a joke? Yes, because this is made by the same producers oh. who make the after movies. Now, this beautiful disaster is also based on novels, so are the after series. Beautiful Disaster is the first book that has three follow-ups and six please tell me. Please tell me there are movies to match every one of those. Well, so we'll get into some more a little bit okay, later, but fine. I will say this. So this is a series as well, but this is like, I imagine, the Fifty Shades of Grey version of, like, the notebook version. Yeah. Like, if after is a notebook, this is the Fifty sure. Shades of Grey. And what is it? It's like sexy, like, fanfics. Okay, Se sexy fanfics, but based on what? All right, hold on, let me get the mic to you. Let me get the mic to you because it sounds like you got some good information. All right, I'm come down. Okay. What's her name? Sarah. Sarah, okay, tell us what we need to know about can I after. Ask, can I just briefly, Sarah, have you read all of these books? I have not, but I've seen the movies. Okay, great. Okay. So let us into it. The After is based on One Direction fanfic, and it's basically <laughs> Harry Styles. Um, 
What now? Yeah. It's Harry Styles basically abusing a woman who loves him for some reason, even though she's being abused by him. And in this movie, actually, there's a part where Dylan Sprouse um, throws a, a cup of something onto a guy, and his shirt says, um, fucking Trevor, which is his character's name. I in saw the, uh, that. Yeah, so fucking Trevor is like a famous line from the Wattpad series from the uh, after movies. <laughs> so this is kind of, and people are saying- Give it up. Amazing. Thank you so much. Give it up for an expert. Give it up for an expert. Wow. And this, people, I think we gotta do the after movies, right? Okay. I have a lot, I have a lot to share as we go down this road, but I don't wanna just devolve it to just the Wikipedia what entry I because did like it is, wow. I'm learning a lot. What I will say about this that I really liked, and maybe this is the juxtaposition you're talking about between the after movies and this movie is, and I mean this, I liked that this movie was so Funny? Horny. Oh, it's I so liked, horny. I liked that these are young people actually being horny and turned on and horny by, turned on by each other and experiences. And it wasn't chaste and it wasn't, they're talking about sex I felt like in a way that I was like, this is what I want sex life of college girls to feel like. The TV show. Oh, I haven't You know what I mean? That. that show is so chaste in a right. way that I'm like, no, I feel like these people are talking more explicitly the way that young people might talk. I guess so, but I don't know. It feels like a, a natural time to talk about the morning boner scene. Because Amen. do we have that on we video? We do have. Can we the watch the boner. whole thing? Uh, this is scene four. Now here's my question: right, well, yeah. as we're watching it, what's making the cat sounds? I don't know. I don't this know. Scene, we will unpack it. Here we go. Uh, scene four. We can't pause it midway, so we'll watch it and then we can comment. Here we go. Scene four. Bad kitty. Mouse. <laughs> Mouse. <laughs> Abby. Why are you cute? Mm, much. Um. No, what do you think it is? Abby, you're... Wait, what are you doing? <laughs> so, are we supposed to believe that she is having a dream about a cat, and then when she touches his heart on, that feels like a cat? What part of the cat is my question? <laughs> what part of the cat does she think she's touching? And if it's its tail, Gross. Gross. But also, I'm <laughs> correct, right? There are cat sounds. Yes. Not only are there cat sounds, but every time she like grabs his dick, there's a meow. That's what I mean. Where is that? Where so, is that coming from? So my my guess is here's my guess. My guess is somehow this scene came after the establishment of the cat that he gets in the later part of the movie. Remember, he comes home oh, with a cat at yes. one point? Yeah, I remember that. And I'm like, that. oh, was this meant to be after that and that cat is still around? Because it is confounding that there are... That but she, Jason, it's even almost if like the, you're hearing her dream. Even if the... Okay, there's still so many questions. Even if the cat is still around, why would the cat respond only in those moments? I agree. Okay, so then the only natural answer is the cat is under the covers? No, is that the sound his dick makes. <laughs> that's and the sound his dick makes. That goes to your theory every time she grabs it, we get it. Meow. Meow. <laughs> and I'm also like, what is her dream exactly? Yeah. Like, why is she Ooh, I got this so... cat by the tail. Oh, cat tail. It's a, cat but tail. I mean, like, and, but also, it's like she's acting so playful, like, <laughs> oh, yeah, you're cute. <laughs> but it's hey. like, none of this is what you would do with a to cat. a cat. Unless she's strangling it. <laughs> why? It was absolutely confounding. That's, that's when I was like, this is the best movie we've seen. Since the Pope's exorcist. <laughs> Why does she immediately fall in love with the Frisbee dude? Like, immediately fall in love with this guy who looks, and no offense to this gentleman, he is not 
a young man. <laughs> and, and, and I don't mean that like, no. he's an older man. We have to, we have to be honest. no less than 41. Yeah. Like not a day if younger he's, than so much If he's so. in college, this is because he never went to college originally. He's like, oh. hey, finally. No, he's I a professor. Ex- he's a tenured professor. Well, that's what I was going to say. I fully expected her to go to class and he was going to be the TA. He was going to be somehow. Yes. But I did. I, not, I laughed so hard when she hits him directly in the nuts with that Frisbee. I was like, I'm Jason. in. I'm in. <laughs> I mean, she's, she's, she's rubbing dicks. She's destroying balls. Wow. Yeah, I'll take it. Please, do you remember what we watched last night? I do. Do you no, remember? I, but I do. Then I do. She <laughs> says something. Again, this is like one of those jokes that is a non-joke where she goes, he's like, she's like, you should put some ice on those balls. And he's like, you should put ice on my balls. And then they just continue the conversation. <laughs> I have so many questions about him, Parker. And we'll find out later that he's a Republican. But that's coming. That's coming later on. But, you know, they did him so dirty by just throwing that backpack on him. Because I know they wanted us to, like, take him in in a real hazy way and not focus too hard. But every time that grown-ass man walked around... Not with, like, one shoulder on, but both shoulders on that backpack, with that backpack. I was like, this is very sad. Well, the and if movie... This is a girl, if, this, if this man is in college, like, you've also just made this character so sad. Like, it was... They have to humiliate him. I, I know. They have to. Because he's inarguably the better choice of someone to date. <laughs> Absolutely full stop. And well, that it is that she is constantly faced with him. He brings her ramen to eat in the library. I, I don't think you can do that. I don't think you can eat ramen. That, <laughs> yeah, I was like, it's like, could you pick a more messy like <laughs> thing that could wreck books? <laughs> it's like it's like saying I brought. I brought Benny Hanna into this library. <laughs> can, you we'll get ima- it. can you imagine you're working in the library? You are paying money to go to school in Sacramento. You are sitting next to someone who sleeps, then talks loudly and eats ramen with someone. Like, I'd be like, get the fuck out of the library. I do want to put this scene on. This is scene two, the Frisbee scene, only because, look, you say she belongs with him. She bumps into him. There's very little connection, and we're supposed hey, to be like, but that's, that's the, our triangle. Really? But that's She's the same with shower Travis. masturbating to the one. Scene, the scene with Travis. Her whole romantic... M.O. is bump into someone. Because remember, she's trying to leave the fight, and she's like, I'm out of here. Boom. Oh, and hand gush, on shoulder. Gush. <laughs> she's like, dunzo. She, she, all she does is bump into people and fall in love. That's all you need. God help this woman on the bus. She's like, boom, boom. <laughs> oh, oh. Shoulders, 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 shoulders. Let's watch scene two. Oh! Oh, no! Oh! Oh, my God! Oh! He's, he's fine! Oh, God, I'm okay. okay, it's okay. He's, it's, he's okay! I'm fine. Okay. Are you okay? No, I'm fine. Okay. I'm so sorry. Oh, God. Oh! You're so cute and you're crying. I'm swear. not... I'm not crying. It's, uh, it's the wind. How long have you been captain of the Frisbee Club? Oh, no, 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 I'm not captain of the Frisbee Club. It was a joke, it was a joke, I'm Parker. (laughs) Hi. Hi, I'm Abby. I'm gonna go, I'm I'm gonna (laughs) wobble. You should put some ice on your balls. You should put some ice on my balls. (laughs) This is flirting in 2023. Okay. You should put some ice on my balls. Walks away. It seems like I'm going to say that to a girl later tonight in New Haven. I have, you, guys, you guys can pick me up at the police station tomorrow. Here's my question. Why did the movie need to tell us via text on screen, 
Tucker Dormitory. Why <laughs> identify this single uh, building in the entire movie? There's never text on screen I again, know. I don't no. think. What it Las Vegas? Okay, well, I it, believe it, you. It, it, I think that they basically they had the the guy who did the Indiana Jones map to show you Sacramento to Vegas, the L shaped <laughs> drive. Um, <laughs> that same person was like, I got some extra time. You need anything? Yeah, make a make a graphic that says dorm room. Okay, got it. Um, quick question for you both: Where do you think this was shot? Uh, Where? Toronto. Yeah. Toronto. Okay. Shh. Because you're asking, I'm going to say it's weird. Because I would have said, like, Baton Rouge sure, yeah. or one of yeah. those kind of... Or Shreveport. Albuquerque. Shh. Yeah. South Africa? Bulgaria. <laughs> you got me, movie. Wow. wow. Bulgaria. This is, a, this is well, all okay. Bulgaria. To be fair, that is also where Lady Bird was shot. <laughs> Bulgaria stands in perfectly for Sacktown, baby. I am kind of shocked the whole movie. <laughs> like, it's such, it's like easy outdoor location. Bulgaria, what kind of tax I'm now are... understanding some of the bad guy's accents. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Wow, um, wow, okay. wow, wow. I mean, like, there, can I, and maybe I'll also ask a question if there are young people in the crowd. I'm curious. Is it just now that everybody's always doing MMA fighting wherever they are, such that genuinely a theatrical production on a college campus in America is just an octagon so that Shakespearean characters can MMA fight each other? Like, but, but was it? I was really confused about that because we didn't hear any Shakespeare, did we? No, we just saw them fight. <laughs> but it was... It was Titus Andronicus. It was we Titus Andronicus. Keep, we keep being told that it's the that's the production. Wow. What the what is that? Why is there so much MMA and why is it not referenced that isn't this weird that we're watching? You can't people? say isn't this weird when a main character in earnest does the Macarena. <laughs> there's <laughs> also there's also in Vegas an advertised fight on a billboard in which the bad guy appears to be choking the lead with a chain to death. To death. And that, is what, that part of what's being advertised? They spent all that money on the billboard, but it's in, like, a fucking dirty-ass garage. Like, it's not it's, a stadium. Well, it's Bulgaria, is what we now know. <laughs> I also had a question about Vegas. <laughs> so, when they... Again, they're always, she's always running away from him. He's not texting her back. I mean, that goes on, and it was exhausting. I've never been so happy to not be single. It really exhausted me and upset me. But I, sorry, Jason, but it's just exhausting. I, uh, when they, when she runs over and kisses him in the hallway in Vegas, they stumble into a hotel room and have sex all across the hotel room and break things, and it's set up as a comedic sequence that Jason really loved. He loves that type of comedy. I laugh my Loves that off. type of physical comedy that really lands and really works. And, but I... I, I would argue that that was a funny sequence. I did not find... I, you know, again, I'm, I call me an old shrew. I did not find <laughs> it funny. Um, but I... I kept on thinking during that sequence, is this their hotel room? Because she was, she was going the other way. Yeah. Or they, was this just an open room? Also, They seem also, to just fall into there a room. Like, there's people at the door, their phone is <laughs> ringing, and police sirens are heard. So clearly, they're making so much noise and causing so much destruction. The police have been called, but the next cut is them in bed. Like, nothing's happened. He gets up, he runs out, she gets up, she runs out. There is glass all over the floor. There is more glass than in Die Hard, and they're walking around, they're fucking on the glass. It's fucking bananas. They destroy the shower. They, they destroy and, everything. When I she like, tries to get, like, when they try to hook up on the minibar, she's just throwing champagne glasses 
out of the way so and that I you will can hold say, on. Paul, I know you know this, but, you know, someone came to our hotel room earlier this evening to blow out my hair because I get my hair blown out for all of you. That's what I do for you guys. And of course, the moment I sat down, because I was still watching the movie, put my little earbuds in, and of course... I come right back into that scene. I know. I, and then like, I'm five minutes my, behind her and, and she, on the couch. And neither of us explained to this poor woman, like, what we were doing. Like, why I... And I know I tell this story all the time. It just still confounds me. Like, I have not explained to this stranger why I'm watching a sex scene in front of her for her to watch as well. And why my husband will be watching that scene right there over by the desk on his own computer and headphones. Taking notes. Two minutes behind. It's like, I just can't get over it. Like, sh- yeah, and neither of us ever make an attempt to explain, like, oh, we actually are here for a show. You know, we just let it roll. You know, we that live that person. We live is that out. currently telling this story <laughs> on their As date, she being should. like, the weirdest As she thing. should. The weirdest thing I just saw. Yeah. Um, okay, I, do you think that Travis, being that he's one of the leads of Titus Andronicus, <laughs> is thought of as one of the college's <laughs> best actors? <laughs> MMA actors. Like, honestly, like, did they run up to the board to be like, did I get it? Did I get, did he audition for it? Did he, he was like, he was like, ah, I'm in. I'm in the play. I'm in. T- well, what's so and weird is And you have to fight that- Chernobyl. Oh, all right. <laughs> I do think he's definitely known as one of the best fighters because Parker is so terrified of him. Oh, yeah. To a, a comical degree. And I kept on thinking, you know, <laughs> our, our lead, Abby, Parker's freaking out in the car Parker's about... Like, Get out of my car! <laughs> scared! Get out of my car! And I Parker, did laugh at that part. I did laugh at that part. Parker delivers some good... He's at some <laughs> points too dry. And, like, at one point when he says, like, uh, she's like, how are your balls? He's like doctor says I'll never have sex again (laughs) hold no smile nothing I'm like these people don't know where the jokes are and maybe it's Bulgarian casting I'm not sure but like he delivered that I'm like but then you would go yeah doctor said never have sex again give me a smile give me a smirk let me know that you're in on your own joke he does not here's the thing here's the thing that's crazy that is kind of and we've talked now for, I don't know, four hours. Um, how long have we been on stage? We've talked all this time and only with the briefest of mentions of what I'm certain is the crux of the movie, the game, yes. if you will, of the movie, which is it's about the fight and Travis and Abby make a bet. If, if, if the guy, uh, Travis says, I can evade every punch, he won't land a hand on me, and she says he will, and their bet is that she will have to live with him for a month. And then that's the bet, and then that should be the structure of the rest of the movie. A hundred, and how to lose a guy in 30 days. It's not, that's not a section of a larger movie where there's yes. a Vegas heist at the end yes, of it. It's exactly. the movie is how to lose a guy, like we're gonna see in 30 days, that movie will take place. What then happens after we've watched long, uninterrupted, the writer-director must be obsessed with MMA. And I wouldn't be surprised if the writer-director of this movie was one of the fighters in the movie. Well, you know who the writer-director is. The... Chernobyl? No. no. Oh. <laughs> I was going to say but what he's written, produced, and directed. Cruel no. Intentions. Okay. That's crazy because the entire time I was watching this, I was now like... Now it makes sense. It really does because the entire time I was watching this, I was like, I think I would really love this movie if she was Reese Witherspoon and he was Ryan Felipe. Like, I think that what I'm trying if, to fi- they, if they were in these roles and understood the comedy and understood what they were doing, like, I would really love this motion So what picture. I'm trying to figure out is, are these the Reese Witherspoon and Ryan Felipe of now? And that's... And, the no. women of New Haven, you've spoken. <laughs> but that is, because I agree, yeah. that is, because this does feel to me like edging closer and closer to cruel intentions, wild yes. things, things that are he also pulpy did, and, you he, know, yeah. funny and He also sexy, did that movie, The bound. Sweetest Thing, which was like that really gross out movie with like, The Sweetest Thing was like... Christina with, like, Applegate. Christina and, Applegate. Uh, 
and Cameron Diaz. Well, Cameron Diaz, yeah. It was like a sexy, it was like a gross out movie. I don't remember it. Okay. Um, but, but there is such a, like, the, the fetishization of MMA and the fighting and all that stuff. I was curious about that, but then I can't remember the point I was making about that. Shouldn't he be wearing a mouth guard? Travis would have absolutely no teeth at the end of every single one of these fights. He's never wearing a mouth guard so that he can flirt. Hey, hey, hey Pigeon, I'll be right back. Bam! <laughs> well, he never gets anyone to punch him. June and I were shocked at this one scene that thankfully we rewound because we were looking at each other and we we're like, what happened here? He goes, and now I know I'm going to make a mistake, but let me show you where I was going. He's like, I don't want to have sex with you, bitch. And we're like, oh. And he said, Hi, Pidge. Like, Pidge. 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 And now, I'm so glad we were around it, Paul, because I was so stunned. <laughs> I was so stunned. I'd never heard anything like it. And then... To hear Zach or Cody say that... I don't want to have sex with you, bitch. Now, I would hear oh, them say sick. that to the doorman of that suite they were in, because he was a <laughs> real hard ass. Here's the thing you wouldn't have had to rewind if you had closed captioning on. It was right there, baby. Um, anyway, I remembered what I was going to say, which is that the whole game is set up about this. He wins the fight, so now they have to live together. And you would have thought that would be the rest of the movie. And instead, it's just, even though we've luxuriated in these fights, it's just a montage. Uh, like a five-minute five montage. This woman has come to... She's left behind Brian Austin Green, her father in Vegas, to go to college. There isn't a single shot of her in that montage doing a goddamn ounce of homework. Well, sometimes <laughs> when they show day one, they're in and out of that bed so many times. Like, how much time are they spending in the bed? It was like, mm -hmm. day, I, I thought it would be like, day 30. It's like, no, day two. Like five well, more times. Day three. It, I'm like, oh, wow. But hang on a second. Keep in mind, because this is a contemporary movie, seven of those days, they both had COVID. Oh, okay. That's so true. So seven days of that month, and they were on a Paxlovid. Um, <laughs> they had both started Paxlovid, but at different times. So you could also tell they had the weird metallic taste in their mouths. <laughs> oh, my God. So they were really locked in that room. What's that? They well, couldn't get out of that room for five days. They couldn't get out, because the roommates were like, no, 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 that you're makes positive. Sense. By the way, the original conceit is so shitty because it's like the shower is busted for 24 hours. She's like, well, you can sleep over here. Why? Just use Why? the shower and go back to your dorm. Agreed. She's like, oh, I can't. I have no place to study. In your dorm room. <laughs> it's the shower. Like, you know, like, or, or I know. miss one day. I also, I also really struggle because I feel like there was a lot left on the floor that they could have dealt with. Like, the fact that she is a genius, a savant at poker, like, let's see those skills. Let's see her read tells. Let's see her strategize and understand. Well, it seems like her tells or her strategy is to make men sexually uncomfortable. <laughs> like, well, she goes to that table like, oh, I was finger banging this person on Halloween. I want to fuck you. And the guy's like, oh. Oh, but that's like, when she's oh, actually playing. What do you mean when oh, she's oh, yeah, playing yeah, yeah. poker? I agree with June. Oh, yes. None of, her, <laughs> none of her street smart skill set, poker playing skill set, is she using in any way, shape, or form to advance herself inside of either the social well, structure what, what or What I'm the, saying is I don't think that she has more than just sexually grossing out dudes. Like, I feel like that was her, like, her amazing poker skills is just being sexually inappropriate to men at the table. So, like, that's all. We, we don't see her count cards. We, so like, you think her whole strategy is to be like, oh, God, had the worst diarrhea today. <laughs> so you think she's been doing that since 13 years old? It's, it worked better at 13. It's weirder. She's like, hey, it's what's like, that? It's like watching The Exorcist. What, what's that, a tiger print? What, do you want to finger me? I'm 13. <laughs> Full House. Watch the TV the show. Like, watch, like, watch <laughs> scene seven. But, like, at least in the movie The Hangover, Zach Galifianakis, you know, he, he gets a lot of things wrong, but then when he plays poker, he goes into, like, Rain Man mode, and he can figure out all these things. I would have things. loved to have seen that. But what we see is this, scene seven. You guys playing poker? No, it's roulette. No. There's a minimum buy-in of five grand. Ooh, okay, Lion King. <laughs> look, Adrian, you look nice, but this is a high-stakes room. Do yourself a favor and go to the main floor and pick out a shiny slot machine. 
I can't go back to the main floor. You see, I'm at this bachelorette party, and Cheryl invited this twat, Terry, who hates me because Lyle finger-banged me on Halloween, which, in my defense, I thought that they were separated. So, there's my vibrator. Uh -huh. Loved that's it. Just, Hilarious. That's strategy. I'll take what I can get. <laughs> <laughs> we were in it's Providence absurd. last night. <laughs> I want to go out to the crowd. I want to see what the crowd has Be to say. Be careful, Paul. We're already it's going to the crowd. Be careful. Be careful, Paul. They've got a pizza out there. All it's right, here we go. It's full of clams. All right, your name? Nancy. Nancy, and your question. How have we not put this together that there isn't another kind of lens to look at this? Travis and Lucky 13. What does it mean? All right, walk it through. Taylor Trap. Swift. This is the good girl and the bad boy. Whoa. This is what this has all been about. Wait, what's happening? So, okay. <laughs> this is good, Jason. I'm going to let her break it down. Right, I know this. You know this and you can help me. Yes, okay. okay. So, Travis. Kelsey. Kelsey. Oh, okay, okay. I get it now. I get it now. Okay, okay. Is trying to court the good girl. Miss Americana, if you must right. say. And... Lucky 13, he does some shifty things. Maybe he like says, come and watch me in my arena. So you say that this movie is, this foretold the future. Yes. Wow. Holy shit. Wow. 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 So Thank what you. you're saying is wow. maybe by Super Bowl, Taylor Swift will puke in Travis's face. Oh. <laughs> Beautiful. By Beautiful the way, disaster. I loved it. I loved, uh, I loved it. Do you have a costume? It, it's it's only fair because he got blood on her face, so it made sense that she barfed straight into his face. Oh. So oh, hot. You, you, oh, let me, get co let me get a costume and then you could come too. Sorry, all right. Well, Whoa! We, this is amazing. You're in a costume. What is your costume? Audrey too from Little Shop of Horrors. I love it. <laughs> An unspooled movie. Great, great, great. All right, so what is your name and your costume? Uh, what is your name and your question? My name is Jessica, and I wanted to know why she cut the hole for her money on the top middle of her mattress <laughs> when you could easily put it on the side. Good question. Yeah, she keeps all of her money. She cuts a hole in the top middle where if she put it on the bottom or the side, it would be easier to get to and not as uncomfortable to sleep in. But your knees and your butt would get stuck in the hole when you yeah. moved around. I, 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 also, I also wrote that I thought it would be very uncomfortable to have a hole right where you sleep yeah. in the mattress, and so, I thought that was foolish of her. But great for Travis with that giant penis. They could just stick it right in that hole yeah. and sleep comfortably on his belly. Thank you for that question. I'm going to come to you. I'm going to move to you. People don't have to come to me, but I just I wanted to make sure we you can come sit down with your drinks. Okay, uh, your name, all right, and your question. I'm Nikki. Um, I was going to ask if, a if Abby is a virgin. I wrote this down Such too. a good Did question. I miss it? Because I think she See, is. See, that's why... Okay, Wait. so I wish this was the Taylor Swift, Travis Kelsey, you know, backstory, at, because, origin story, because I wanted her to be more of a virgin, kind of awkward, uh, like, like math genius, poker genius... And instead, I feel like the movie was telling us that she was somehow a bad girl before and was trying to rehabilitate herself and wanted nothing to do with poker. I don't think she's a virgin, but, but why I... why did they count? Oh, she's categorically not a virgin. Wait, wait, no, no, but why did they count? He's like, okay, One, I'm put two, it in, and, she and then she's like, I can't wait, wait for well, no, three. But that's, that's just how people oh, have but, sex now. She was very <laughs> that's how, him That's away. how people yeah. have there sex now. So, Who no, here no, no, does... No. Who here does the countdown? No, no, no. No, she kept pushing him away. Like, when he started to, like, get into, like, her, yes. she was like, wait a second, I have to go to the bathroom and talk to my friend first. Yes, well, and I thought there was so much made. There was so much made of the moments of penetration, and that's time I'll never get back. I'll just have I to think... live with that. But there was too much made of that moment where I was like, is she losing her virginity? You, can I ask you a question? Do you think, okay... Because I'm genuinely curious. If there had been a scene at the beginning of... Because I think the move, what the movie is missing is context. Is context for her experience as Lucky 13 with her dad. 
If there had been a scene at the beginning where they are paper mooning themselves across Vegas, Fun. he's getting into trouble and relying on her to get him out of trouble. Again, and I'd you love realize to see that movie. she's a child who's responsible for a problematic, addictive father. Probably and like that, Zach and Cody were for yes, their parents and the fucking exactly. 10 years How they did that dare show. You. What? How <laughs> dare you? And for the first time, she's like, I choose me. I want to go to college and be normal. No? All right, your name, your question. Uh, I'm Steve, Team Fred. And uh, I just want to know, June, do you feel like uh, with all of this fighting, has, uh, has it unlocked any more uh, secrets into what a street fighter is? Or <laughs> is this a street fighter? From a question you, asked by a man wearing a shirt that says, what exactly is a you street know, it's, fighter? It is funny, because when you were talking about MMA earlier, I, I did think to myself, I didn't voice it, but I did think, what is MMA? What is it? What is it? I don't really know. And I, I actually do assume it's the same thing as street fighting. Correct? No, I don't think so, because none of it happened in a street. But it seems so lawless. But it's, it, it did seem lawless, except that it didn't. Like, it was still, it, it seemed like it was... I didn't see a referee in there. Well, there was, but there was. This, oh, no, that was in the later fight. You're right. Yeah. Um, but there definitely was, like, the kind of idea of a organized... It didn't feel to me like in the first fight, one of them was going to die. Like, it wasn't like one of the... It, Is it that felt, MMA? No, MMA, no, that's what I mean. It doesn't feel like, I, I feel like Street Fighter is like, you fight till someone's dead, right? I guess we're still asking the question. <laughs> I don't know. Like I, all good art. I'm up here in the balcony. Oh, oh, be careful, Paul. You have to be careful. All right. Ooh, balcony monsters of New Haven. All right, what do we have? All be right. careful, Paul, be careful. Someone's all right. got a sign Somebody has there. a sign that says, Paul, my uncle is your cousin. Oh, my uncle is your cousin. Wait, my. There it is. So, <laughs> guess what? I got my... family here tonight. I do have family here tonight. Okay. My uncle is your cousin. <laughs> That's the T-shirt. Which cousin? Paul. My <laughs> uncle is your cousin. Okay, there it is. All right. <laughs> Hi. Hi, I'm Dave. Dave, what's your question? Are you related to me? Uh, not that I know. <laughs> okay. How many people in this audience are related to Paul? Guys, I have some family here tonight. Oh, wow. Be cool. Let's not talk about sex throughout the entire show. <laughs> All right, here you go. Hi, your question? Do you think the fact that Abby comes from a troubled past and is introduced to a toxic influence like Travis through her friend named America is a comment on the deaths of despair and the downward spiral of the middle class? Now, there we go. That's a question. This movie is deeper than you all realize. Well, I mean, I would, I would argue that the active B story of the movie is America getting fucked. <laughs> the disdain that our no, lead okay, the disdain <laughs> that our lead character goes a nurse's costume, as if. That's the most cliched, like, sex costume. My favorite part of that was that it was first thing in the morning. I don't know what you guys are up to, but I don't wake up and be like, should we put on costumes? <laughs> to nobody. <laughs> All right. Your name and your question. Hi, I'm Jason. Um, nice. This guy gets it. A... So we're possibly non-consensually violently destroying a hotel room and having sex. Uh, why and where is the cat that we hear when the sink breaks? Say it again? There's a cat heard when the sink breaks Oh, that's because... No, no, I'm so sorry, Jason. That's his dick. We have now established We've, that. It is... It's established in the earlier scene. His dick makes cat sounds. And so while they're having sex, boy, is it purring. All right. These are great questions. I'm, I'm reticent to leave, but I feel like I'm... New Haven people... showing up. Wow, there's two people coming at you, Paul. Okay, Watch here we out. go. Bring us home. What is your question? All right, so we see Dylan Sprouse's ass an uncomfortable amount of times in this movie. So I if only you remember, saw it once. It's there twice. Is there a few times? It's there twice. It's like... 
It's like four times. Okay. <laughs> so if you remember, Dylan Sprouse was in Big Daddy with Adam Sandler, and he's got the line, but I wet my own ass. So if you think of this movie as a sequel to Big Daddy, what does that do to the way we view it? Wow. It took, I just want people down here to know, two men had to participate <laughs> in the asking of that single question, the entirety of which is predicated on us having seen an Adam Sandler movie, <laughs> which I have not. So my guess is... Um, you did see, we did see that movie for this podcast. We did not. The oh, Adam I just Sand saw that movie on my own? That was one of the movies that we showed our children. <laughs> what? Really? Yep. S Siri, call <laughs> Child Protective <laughs> Services. Los Angeles. I thought for sure we saw that movie for the podcast. Wow. We have never done an Adam Sandler movie, nor will we. Yes, we did. We did Jack and Jill, one of my favorite movies. <laughs> I have huge news. We have not. We've never done uh, that. But I, I will movie. say... I, well, good, yeah. because it, it should be un, unspooled. I will say we've talked about it, and you've had this exact same take, which is, I believe, why we haven't done it. I've told June, we've talked about your memory, and I said to June the other day, I said, hey, it's uh, 4.40, we gotta go. And you said, great. And you walked out of the room, and you came in, you said, okay, it's 4.40, we gotta go. Guys... Women are doing so much. <laughs> and that's all I'm going to say. There's so much labor that's unaccounted for. That's Second opinion, people, And that's all I'll down. say about that. Um, obviously, we have opinions about this movie. But there are people out there that love this movie. It is now time for Second Opinions. Hi, everybody. I'm Mike. This film is a saddening bore. I don't want to watch anymore. And I could spit in the eyes of fools on Amazon as they rave about a douchebag fighting in his blue jeans. Oh man, look at that caveman go. It's Zach from that Disney show. Take a look at the pigeon bailing out a bum dad. Oh man, I wonder if she'll ever know. He's from 90210. How this get five stars? Amazing, great job. Excellent. And excellent job. Okay, here's the deal, people. 4,549 reviews. And this is a brand new movie, right? When did it come brand out? Brand new movie. This came out in April. Oh, wow. Of 2023. Okay, the average rating is four stars. 59% are five stars. Jess writes, decided to watch this during my lunch break, and within watching the previews, I was already hooked. I was waiting for a movie with Dylan Sprouse where he's not a second choice to the lead actress. Five stars, already hooked. Wait, is he normally, is he normally? In always. Oh, he's always. He's in always. Got it. The other series. He's, oh, 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 I see. I see. <laughs> he wasn't just saying always. I didn't know if he was like, that was his, if the twin brother was the hunk and he was the, the dud. Maybe there's two. A, twins, there's a hunk and a dud, right? <laughs> Allison writes, it's one of those movies where it comes into your life when you need it. In my case, I had a very recent breakup, and I'd given up on love and romance. The humor was a lightning addition. <laughs> you Sometimes agree, Jason. <laughs> you have to see it to regain faith. Plus, Cole Sprouse. Damn! What a guy! Oh, I no. loved it. Dylan Sprouse. That's the, uh, that's the other one? Okay. It, she thought it was the other one. I just saw a second opinion here that says, I was blowing a woman's hair out at a hotel room <laughs> and watched 25 minutes of this movie over her shoulder. I found it chilling and upsetting. <laughs> Why was she taking so many notes? 
And why was her husband watching it on a separate screen and taking somehow more notes? And he's, why is he just one minute behind her? <laughs> just a few minutes. Song Man writes, I love you, Virginia Gardner, emoji smoochie. This was a comedy slash romance, enjoyable, being a huge Virginia Gardner fan. Emoji heart eyes. Got a laugh, almost a breakup argument, then snap, love, and sex, make out, film, comedy, emoji. <laughs> Laughing emoji. That was a tricky one to read out loud. I'll be honest, we are crumbling as a society. <laughs> um, Brianna Chatham wrote this loved emoji face Hearts. The acting is honestly not the best, but I am obsessed with this movie. Maybe because I grew up on The Sweet Life, but seeing Dylan all grown up and being hella hot just does it for me. The action is fun, and the enemies to lovers vibe is cute as fuck. Literally watched it six times in two days. I was six off work. Times? Don't judge me. Very cute. Five stars. Loved. Six times. And what isn't in there is that that person pushed send on that review and then drove off of a cliff. <laughs> Even I, a diehard lover of this movie, say six is too many times in two days. This movie would have needed like a hundred more boobs. And I'll end on this one right here from Leela M. Imagine a Disney Channel original movie, but horny. Yes. You know what? That's, yeah, that I, I agree with that is. one. I do I agree with that one. In a positive way. <laughs> I did some quick uh, research here. Okay. Virginia Gardner, 28. Mad Dog Maddox, 31. Frisbee and the Nuts Dude, 34. The, uh, the dad, Brian Austin Green, 50, which meant he had her at 22. Well, they, but he seemed young. Right? <laughs> oh, well, wait. 50. Wait, wait, wait. By the way, no, no. I did 50's my math like wrong. like a young, oh, wait, I did. a young, normal, vibrant age for him to be. No, 50's for sure young, Jason. 50's young on the, the pulse, viral. 50's totally young. The chilling silence was everything. But by the way, I'm realizing <sighs> New Haven is like, no. I'm You're reali- dead to us, old man. I'm realizing... Wow. I'm the same age as Bag? <laughs> yeah. Well, here's what I'm realizing. I thought, here's what I'll say to you, Jason, lift to lift your spirits. I thought he looked great. Oh, I yeah. I thought he looked great. Here's what I'm going to say. I just realized a piece of information that I'm wrong about. Virginia is... 28. The actress is 28. But the character has to be younger than 21 because she's not allowed to gamble. So, she is a 28-year-old playing let's... 19. So, how old is Frisbee Guy supposed to be playing at 34? 23. Wow. Thank you. Why do you know? <laughs> yeah. But, how ma'am? You... Ma'am, school? ma'am. The answer how... is medical school? Okay. So in order to be in medical school, you have to be 23 at least? Well, what about Doogie? Uh, so, great question. What about Ma'am? Doogie? That's the shirt. What about Doogie? <laughs> Let they're me... All, the, at the end of the day, they're all too old to be playing these ages. But... But let me be clear. If actors that were the actual ages that they're supposed to be portraying were grabbing even fake dicks in this movie, we'd all be like, no, I didn't like this. I didn't like watching this. This was yeah, uncomfortable. The, oh, the age helped us. If you watched actual 18-year-olds grabbing dicks, and th- this would have been chilling. This would have been kids. This would have been uncomfortable. So thank your lucky stars that everybody right. fingering in this movie is in their mid-30s. Now, right. what I want to tell you both... So that you can enjoy it, you fucking creeps. 
What I want to tell you both is, before this movie was released, you guys don't know this, they shot a sequel. And the trailer is here. Take a look. Travis, our whole relationship has just been this crazy pressure cooker. Neither of us have been able to blow off any steam. I have always wanted a bachelor party. Okay, let's do it. Welcome to Gatito, Mexico. This is not about his needs. Uh, uh, uh. Put that down. It's about your needs. Wait a minute. Hey guys. This whole trip was a mistake. We want you to fight for her. What are you doing? See guys? You don't see the scare and you're right in the face. Love. Abby, love. Really? Yes, Segunda! No, nobody! Yes! There it is. Is it 2024 yet? <laughs> That's exciting. Holy shit. That, wow, we, wow, wow. All right, now we'll pose for our last picture. And thank you, New Haven, for this amazing show. You are an amazing crowd. We will be back. Thank you so much for coming. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Good night. Great job. Eat shit, Connecticut. Thank you so much to the staff at the College Street Music Hall and our amazing tour manager, Beth Thomas, and everyone in the audience who made it such a great night, especially some members of my Connecticut family. Uh, if you want to feel like you're a part of the show, you can get yourself a shirt that we designed live with the audience at night. The shirt says Tucker Dormitory, Bulgaria. And you can snag that shirt at tpublic.com slash stores slash HDTGM. And every shirt we made for the entire summer tour and pretty much every show is available there. We are going on a UK and Ireland tour. While most shows are sold out, there are a handful of tickets left for London and some tickets left for Belfast. So head to hdtgm.com to get your tickets. My book, Joyful Recollections of Trauma is available for pre-order. Have you not pre-ordered it yet? Well, you better get to it because it actually helps me a lot. I don't ask for much. I do ask for this, but here's what I'm going to do. If you do it, Go to my website, show me your receipt, and I will send you an autographed postcard with a special message on the inside. I've already sent off like 700 of them, so I would love to continue to do it. I will do the first 3,000 that register, and if you do that, you also get access to Paul Shear's Secret Scrapbook, where you get to see pictures and videos from my childhood that I won't release anywhere else. It's a special part of the website, so thank you for pre-ordering. I appreciate you. And you can get this book wherever you get your books, your audio books, your ebooks, whatever you want. It all counts. All right. And if you have a correction and omission from this episode, go to our Discord at discord.gg slash HDTGM or leave me a voicemail at 619 Paul Ask. Then make sure you tune in next week to our Last Looks show as we talk a little bit more about Beautiful Disaster. And I will respond to each of your messages. Plus, Jason and I will stop by to chat about some TV and music that we are currently loving. And as always, we will announce our next movie. You can find us everywhere online at HDTGM. And last but not least, I gotta say thank you to all you listeners who support this show every week and our entire team who this show could not be done without. I'm talking about our producers, Scott Sonny, Molly Reynolds, and our movie-picking producer, Avril Halley, our engineers, Casey Holford and Rich Garcia, and our associate producer, Jess Cisneros, who makes our amazing social media videos. That's all I got. We'll see you next week on Last Looks. Until then, bye for now.